Hi everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, reaching out to you from the deep subterranean catacombs beneath Cuba, click clicking my way through the most recent early access game brought to you by the devs most widely known for the Tropico series. That's right, from banana fields that would make a bulimic monkey swoon to the darkness and dank stank of dungeons deep, somewhere in a land known as Zagorovia, which I assume is probably just east of Transylvania or somewhere in the Bronx. This is a place of the darkest evil where ghost skeletons, spiders, and giant rock monsters all invited their friends to come over and party, but in monster language, party must mean screw shit up, and you, Victor Vran, have been asked to go in and clean up the mess. And monsters are indeed messy. In fact, in the time that they've moved in, the entire place has gone to such complete shit that most of it looks like people would have never lived there in the first place. I guess it is accurate that truly shitty renters can age a home far past its years. Victor Vran is an action RPG or action role-playing game, and here you do play a role, you're Victor Vran, and so is everyone else, because the game doesn't have different heroes or classes, it's just got Victor. Victor runs, stabs, slashes, shoots, magics, and leaps his way through monster hordes requesting that they politely vacate the premises, like some kind of Puritan John Wick pissed off at the world after watching a Sarah McLaughlin video and having his entire day ruined. He's truly a shitty visitor to have over. Listen, as we all know, Action role-playing games have a stable of expectations and a list of supposed requirements the length of Amanda Bynes' rap sheet, but Victor Vran doesn't always play nice in that arena. Let's check it out. Does Victor Vran bring in a new day with his Shikan the Forever Man angry pilgrim getup, or does he just look odd in a sea of excellent opponents, such as the original Sacred, Torchlight, and of course Diablo? Let's also remember that this review is for the early access version and reviews what you get for the cash up front. It's to help you make that decision if you're going to help these guys move forward or not. Graphics are up first. You know, for a game from a publisher not known for this kind of thing, the first couple minutes of playing Victor Vran made me realize that expectations are always best left at the door. The game looks amazing with colored lighting, full destructibility of many items, spell effects, animations, and monster design all looking phenomenal. This was truly a surprise. Though the game is early access and the movies that play sometimes have an odd hitch in their FPS, the game itself is beautiful and mixes Transylvania, Barovia, and someone's underground kidnap dungeon perfectly. Animation on creatures is awesome. Awesome, and some of the largest ones break into multiple pieces on death, which can either mean hurrah, you can move on, or oh shit, they're still coming. For many of the creatures, this is not their final form. Now within the game, the frame rate was rock solid, though at sometimes it had a couple issues running the highest anti-aliasing solution. So you can go with FXAA or MSAA at a lesser setting and still have a fairly crisp looking title. I really like the different settings you could adjust, and for an early access title, there was more than others. Again though, the movies, though there's a few of them, have some wonkiness and there is placeholder art in various places but that's why this is called early access and not hey jump on this complete game early just because we wanted to surprise you edition honestly i thought it was great throughout up next is sound We all know that action RPGs are usually a discordant affair, with sounds running all over the top of themselves as eight enemies hit you at once while you cast God Hump on a giant spider and stab an enemy right in his baby producers. This game is no different, with effects of all kinds triggering at the same time, producing an orchestra of smashes, crashes, bangs, and booms. The sounds are good, but as with almost any action RPG, they can become overwhelming after long periods of play, and rarely do they really inform the gamer of specific dangers beforehand. Instead, it's usually, oh hey, that crackling sound is your face on fire. Here's a pickaxe, you might want to put it out. Ambient sounds like wind, the clutter of an occupied room, fountains and rippling jets of poison exploding from spiders' surprisingly impressive sized guts are all done well, but are fairly lean and usually lost if the music is on. And up next is music. Excellent. You know, I really feel like we're in a good place for gaming now. In the past, music was one of the first things where cuts were made, and some games had soundtracks the equivalent of a bunch of lobotomized lemurs hammering on a Korg electric keyboard while running Fruity Loops in the background. Instead, here we have an excellent variety of tracks, somber and moving, spectral and surreal, with just a hint of dread, all coupled with battle music that doesn't try to raise above the level of action, but tries to accompany it. Excellent music, simply fantastic tracks throughout. Voice. None. So let's move on. Gameplay. 
Victor Vran starts out like most action RPGs. You're told there's a problem somewhere, and it usually involves every manner of beastie moving into an area that someone else wants, like European squatters. You're sent out to clean them out, do your thing, perform your work, and here is where Victor is a bit different from other games. Victor himself is not customizable. There's no stats that you can upgrade, but instead every weapon class you get has its own combination of unique skills. Potions, very reminiscent of Witcher, offer Victor both offensive and defensive specialties, and there is also Destiny cards. Cards. These are cards I assume you lick and stick to your fucking forehead that give you awesome bonuses and unique powers. Now, some people will balk at the fact that there are no classes, no character-based skills, and I get that. But after 11 hours, I can honestly say that Victor Vran is going for something a bit different than some of the other action RPGs, and I think it hits it for the most part. First up, you know, Victor Vran has a jump button, which the first time I used it made me think the game had some kind of fucking glitch and Victor was just saying, screw it, and gonna leap out of the game. But instead, the jump button adds a tremendous amount of fluidity, exploration, and overall flexibility to the game that other action RPGs don't have. Secrets can be unlocked by wall jumping, enemy projectiles dodged by leaping over them, and even area of attack stuns can be used. It really does feel unique, but perfectly suitable for this game, and the levels reflect that. Secondly, the game works perfect with a controller. Now, some might have an issue with that, but it's either controller or WASD, keyboard, and mouse. And I've decided to try both, and without a doubt, I enjoyed the controller more. The aiming is spot on, and the game just feels more fluid and connected using a controller than the mouse and keyboard. Your mileage will, of course, vary. As Victor collects swords, mauls, guns, and other weapons and potions on his quest, you begin to realize that the developer's stance of returning the action to the action RPG is real. Now, I may not agree that action RPGs as a whole were missing action, but Victor Vran and his various abilities, and especially the jump button, really do feel more visceral to me than past titles. Now, that's not to say everything is perfect in fake Transylvania. The game is missing some stuff that makes me question exactly how it's gonna play in the long run. There are no sockets on weapons to stick jewels, no classes, as I said before, no gender picking, and the cutscenes and some of the inventory are, have the word placeholder smashed onto them. But even as an early access title, this game excels at doing what it sets out to do, and that's deliver an action RPG. The interplay of skills and weapons with jumping, dodging, and secondary forms for many enemies are concrete. And add to that the overkill stat. Overkill is basically the thing that really does put someone to bed at night or every single person's death in Sons of Anarchy. It's basically Victor stabbing the stab hole in the stab guy so he can make it bigger so he can stab it again while stabbing in different places as well. You see, many of the creatures are difficult to stop without adding overkill, and that stat, and the way it's intertwined within the others, feels like chocolate and peanut butter, baby. It's perfect and adds another really unique layer to the game. There is just something cool about watching a skeleton reassemble like a big bony middle finger aimed directly at your own fighting skills. I loved overkill. Longevity. You know, I don't know. Listen, the game doesn't use randomized enemies. They're hand-placed, and without randomization, without a clear idea of what will be offered in the future, you know, this is one category that is just completely up in the air for me. But before you start to come unglued, let's discuss a couple things. The game is 15 bucks, and I have 11 to 12 hours into it, and that is a heady time versus cost statistic right there for a game that doesn't even have all its content and supposedly is going to be two to four times this size by summer at a time they plan to start offering free expansions, so keep that in mind. Since we don't know the story too well, we can't really identify the motivation, and if that would make gamers return, so I made up my own. You see, in Victor's land every single day is Thanksgiving, and he's always asked to cut the turkey. Pissed off at the world, Victor decides to take it out on a bunch of squatters simply because, well, who needs an excuse, really? Fun factor. It's fun. I gotta say, leaping around and smashing people's pottery like a pissed off Patrick Swayze seeing Demi Moore with another man, I could not believe how much fun I was having. The skills, the enemies, the locations are all incredibly polished for being early access. If only we knew the general story, because right now, again, I had to make it up on my own. What does Victor Vran do right? Graphics are excellent, and the title is fairly well polished. The music, insanely good. I love, love the soundtrack. And the fun factor's through the roof. This game pays off instantly. What does Victor Vran do wrong? You know, it's early access, which means the story's fairly well, it's just not there. And there's some placeholder art here and there within the game, but again, that's expected on an early access title. So anybody listening to this review should already know some of that kind of stuff is gonna exist. So I rate early access games on it's a steal, wait for a deal, maybe at the price of a meal, or are you fucking for real rating scale? This is 
it's a steal. If you like action RPGs, there is nothing here that is worrisome, but there is a whole lot of awesome. At $15.99, this game will please everyone but the most die-hard traditionalists. And let's be honest, if you are one of them, you never got past the no classes thing and are watching School Dance Wars on YouTube anyway. So that's it for me. If you liked the video, hit like. If you dislike to hit dislike, peace out, and I hope to see you in fake Transylvania.